is Mary Sakelariadou. I am professor of theoretical physics at King's College London, and now I'm visiting the observatory of Godazio, and more precisely, the Virgo uh, Gruppo of Artemis. So I'm going to very briefly to present you the paper that we have recently written, uh, that is the, the most recent results about constraints and cosmic strings from the LIGO Virgo Kagra collaboration. I was responsible for this paper. But first of all, what are cosmic strings? So as you know, after the Big Bang, the universe is in expansion, and therefore the temperature goes down. Actually, today is pretty cold. Now, during these uh, uh, epochs of the, the temperature goes down, the universe undergoes a series of phase transitions, which are followed by spontaneously broken symmetries. It's the same thing like what happens in the water as the temperature goes down. It goes from the phase of gas, liquid, and finally solid. So, cosmic strings, according to many theories of uh, uh, field theories which we have, which are motivated from high energy physics, tell us that cosmic strings, pretty uh, generically, they should appear in the early universe. Now, the strings are curved in the universe and they move. As they move, what can happen? They can intersect with another string, as you can see here, the blue one is going to intersect around one, and they are going to exchange partners. Now, a string can also self-intersect with itself, or as well with another string, and they can chop off loops. Now, these things oscillate. As they oscillate, they emit particles, and for what we are more interested, gravitons, and therefore we might have a kind of gravitational waves that can be emitted from these objects. Now, by studying the effect of studying the gravitational waves from cosmic strings, we can go back and put constraints on the particle physics models which motivate their existence. Now, as I said before, when strings exchange partners, there are going to be some discontinuities, which we call them kinks. Now, the kinks move along the string, so you might have a kink and another kink to interact. And there are as well points on the string where instantaneously it moves at the speed of light. We call them cusps. Cusps, kinks, and kink-kink collisions are the places along the strings from where you have more gravitational waves to be emitted. Now, how do we search for gravitational waves? We search for bursts, or we might have a superposition of many bursts, and that we call it a stochastic background. Now, for bursts, we first go and we see whether the candidate that we have have the appropriate waveform. If this is the case, then we go to study the likelihood to see that indeed, to be, to be shocked finally, that it is a the detection and is not a noise from our instrument, interferometer in this case. For the stochastic, we have theoretical studies that they tell us what is the stochastic background. There has not been detection so far, and the no detection is going to put constraint on the free parameters of the model. Which are the free parameters of the model? First of all, you have to know what the model is. And in the literature, there exist two models which they give us the distribution of loops, how many loops you have of a given size. These are coming from complicated computer simulations. There is not a consensus yet. So we study these two models, and for the first time in the literature, we, could, we examined a third, more agnostic model to see the influence on the results. Now, the results we have, once you fix which model you want to, to consider, they are going to give constraint on the tension of the string, that's the only free parameter, as a function of the number of kings, which as well is going to be given from your simulations. So the constraints we obtain so far are the most uh, stringent constraints which exist in the literature if you compare them against constraints from big particle synthesis, from pulsar time array, or from cosmic microwave background. So this is an excellent result because this implies that we can go back to put constraints on the particle physics model that we have. And for sure, we expect in the next observing trend to have even the possibility of put even stronger constraints on cosmic strings. 